how your mother makes you hate your own sibling. This is the case for me with my own sister. I have grown very resentful of my sister. And I think for the longest time, I was resentful. I was bitter towards my own sister. Not only for for her bullying me, bossing me around, belittling me, making me feel anxious, making me feel small for all those for all those years, but also the resentment also came from my mother not really helping us as her children, as siblings, as sisters, to build a solid foundation for a sisterhood. Now, granted, anything could have happened between my sister and I as we grew. Maybe we might have ended up not getting along or whatnot. That would have not been on my mother. But still, my mother, I want to blame her. I want to blame her for not really establishing that solid foundation between my sister and I. Something that I've I've started to notice while I'm in this journey of just looking back and realizing the unhealthy behavior that has been displayed in this family for time and time again. So I used to be the good girl. I used to be the child who did everything, went over and above, because sadly, even though at that time I didn't realize, I was actually just trying to be liked by my own mother. My mother never really hated me. And even at this point, I wouldn't say my mother hates me. But I think, and I know, I don't even think, I know that my mother has so many issues within herself, so many issues from her past, from past hurt, past pain, wounds that are not healed, that she automatically just projects and hurts other people without her even fully realizing it. At certain times, I really do believe that my mother's way of hurting us as her children, or even anyone else for that matter, it is intentional. I really seriously believe that it's like one of those people who say something that's really going to scar you or like say a backhanded compliment or say something that wounds you. But maybe while they were saying it, you didn't really think maybe it was that bad. But when you go back home and sit, you think, wait, what did they actually mean? And I think my mother Sometimes in the way she hurts you, especially in the things that she says, because my mother is very creative, for lack of a better word. She's very creative in hurting you. Sometimes it is not, and I always say this, and it annoys me. Sometimes it is not as direct as direct as her saying, hey, you look ugly. But it's maybe posed as a question as in to say, oh, it's is that how you're dressing today? Or is that how you're doing your hair? It, it, she she hurts you and wounds you and, and takes jabs at your self-esteem through very carefully phrase, um, phrased statements. And so I know that a lot of the hurt that my mother has caused me, that my mother has caused us as her children, it's because of her own pain. Okay, now this for me, it still doesn't justify her. It doesn't make it right what she did, but... I also have to be able to reason and understand why she has done the things that she has done. And part of the things that she has done or not done is help my sister and I to establish a solid sisterhood. Now, this is fully my mother's responsibility, especially when we were kids. Because when you are a kid, you learn from the adults. You learn from the grown-ups you watch how they treat you you watch how you listen to what they say and so my mother as children she never established that foundation for us granted now that we are adults I'm in my late 20s my sister's in her early 20s I do think that my sister and I now have the responsibility on us to work on that relationship to establish something more solid but because my sister has adopted a lot of the narcissistic, emotional, abusive, manipulative habits from my mother. Because she has, to- she has taken so many of the bad habits from my mother. I really have little hope of my sister and I establishing a solid 
relationship. I think our relationship is not genuine. My sister and I, we don't necessarily have like cat fights or always just dragging each other, but there's just an unspoken uneasiness and and lack of sisterhood between us. And I think my sister also takes from my mother um, the habit of pretending. There, there's always been, and, I, and I'm noticing it now more than ever, that there's this facade, there's this pretense, which I suppose to them it seems natural. I think to them, perhaps they don't even see that they're pretending. In this family, shoving things under the rug and not addressing them, not confronting them, not dealing with them, is the normal way to live. And if you choose to pull that stuff out of the rug, you are seen as the bad person. Because my mother and my sister don't want to deal about, don't want to deal with issues, especially if it points out something that they could work on, or something that they can improve, or something that they did wrong. They don't want to deal with those things. And so on the surface, my sister and I, our relationship, it seems okay. But honestly, it's not okay. Because there are so many things that are pushed under the rug that are not spoken. Even I even believe that my sister has her own resentment and bitterness and hatred or whatever any other not so good emotions towards me. But because the norm in this family and it's deeply rooted and was planted by my mother the norm is to just push things under the rug so lately what i've what i've noticed as i was saying that i've always been the good girl who who does everything right tries to go above and beyond so that my mother would like me so that you know she will give me affection she will give me praise because i always had to work for those things and that's where that's part of the emotional abuse. That's part of the emotional neglect where I felt like I had to work for my mother's affection. I had to work for my mother's attention. I had to work in order for me to feel like she loves me. And so I was that girl going above and beyond as a child, as a teenager, even in my early 20s, just going above and beyond to be there for my mother to show up for my mother, to do things around the house, to be there for everybody around this family, to be a shoulder to cry on, to be a pillar of strength, not even seeing how much that was taking a toll on me, how much that was depleting me. And no one even stepped back to to look and say, not my sister, to say, hey, you taking on a lot, you know, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Not my own mother. Nobody stepped aside to be like, she's always there for us. She was always there for, for us to cry on her shoulders. Nobody stopped to think about me until I had to stop and think about me. Sometimes you have to be the one who gets to the point where you think about you and it's not selfish i hate it when people say oh now i'm just gonna be selfish with myself and i'm not it's not being selfish it's doing the reasonable thing so that you can be there for other people in a healthy way when you can give yourself time love affection when you can be able to put yourself first in necessary cases then you'll be able to be there for other people from a healthy point. So I hate it. I hate this new age stuff where people are like, I'm just going to be selfish and I'm just going to do me. The word selfish is such a negative connotation and I don't know how it is inserted into something positive. Because thinking of yourself, being there for yourself, putting yourself first, prioritizing yourself, your well-being, your emotional health, it is a positive thing. So I don't understand how the word, the word selfish is inserted into that. Anyway, I digress. And so I was that girl, like, just trying to get in my mother's good books, fighting to be seen. And because I was that person, I was often the one taken advantage of, not only by my mother, but also by my siblings. I was the one who, who often got... Um, what can I say? Like the one who was sent to do things around the house. The one who ended up doing almost everything. You know what I mean? Like you were the one. 
I don't know how to explain this. I don't know how to explain this, but I ended up having to take a lot of other responsibilities that could have been split or shared between my siblings and I. But because my mother knew that I was the good girl, I was the good kid, she took advantage of that. So when she saw that she couldn't get through to the others, she knew that I would step up and I would be there to do it. She took advantage of that because instead of setting her foot down and saying that, hey, this this child is not going to be the one who always does this. So I'm going to actually put my foot down as a parent and let the others know that they also need to do their fair share. They also need to be responsible for this and that. So when she saw that, you know, she couldn't break through or maybe they were giving her attitude or they didn't want to do it or they were being like, you know, just kids, you know, sometimes kids just don't want to do things. Like, for example, even just making tea. Like my mother would want tea and I would be the one who always got up to do it for her because the others just didn't feel like it. You know, obviously when you're watching TV and then your mother wants some tea, you're like, oh, mom, can you just like sit still and not say anything? But I would end up being the one who does it. And and so because she saw that I had that characteristic, I had that personality, I had that habit of always just getting up and doing it for her because I was like, Ugh, if no one's going to do it, I'm going to do it. I always took it upon myself, not only to make my mother happy, but also just taking taking the responsibility upon myself. I, I, I don't know why, but I always felt like things were just my responsibility, like I had to be the one who does something. And so she took advantage of that for the longest time, for the longest time, so much so that when I went to varsity and started coming home for holidays because now I was far away living in a different place obviously having different um, habits like even just like cleaning my place and whatnot so when I came back home I no longer could could be that good girl you know that was taken advantage of so I started like insisting that hey mom tell my sister to do this because like I end up being the only one I made this other example in another episode where I said like my mother would come back with the groceries and I would end up being the one who always unloads the groceries and put them in the cupboards and my sister would just never bother and here's the craziest thing about my sister the things that are the thing that annoys me the most she never stops and says oh my word you have been doing this like for almost every week now so let me just help you out no she's the most unreasonable selfish person ever like if you just do something she will never step in on her own judgment and say hey you know what you've been doing this for some time so I'm gonna help you out like she'll just let you do it forever and ever and never step in to help and so when I came back when I started coming back for holidays back at home I just I think maybe the distance gave me some perspective and some clarity and just me seeing things differently now that I wasn't home full time and so I would start saying like hey like mom also ask my sister to do that because I always do it and she never does it and when I say my mother doesn't have a backbone I I don't say it to disrespect her. I don't say it to bash her. I say it as a fact. It is just a fact. So my mother is kind of scared of my sister. And I get that because I was also scared of my sister. She's a bully. She's got an attitude. She's always got the snappiest comebacks. And so most of the time you end up just doing things because you don't want to get into an argument with her. Sometimes you end up doing something you don't feel like doing or doing something that's her responsibility because you just don't want to get in an argument with my sister because she will have comebacks. She will give you an attitude. Somehow you will end up being the one in her mind. You will end up being the one in the wrong. And so I also used to be scared of my sister and I would avoid like saying anything to her. I would end up taking her responsibilities or picking after her because I just didn't want to get in an argument. And that is one of the signs of a bully. 
because they emotionally and psychologically threaten you to a point where you no longer even want to stand up for yourself because you just think this is just going to end up in an argument this is going to end up in a fight and i don't want to do that so once you are not standing up for yourself you are obviously being taken advantage of because you're like i don't want to get in an argument so i'm just going to do this anyway so i understand that my mother is scared of my sister but the reason i also say that my mother doesn't have a backbone instead of instead of being a fair parent my mother let's say for example the making tea for her let's say on a monday she asked for tea and this is another thing that i that bothers me so much with my mother when she asks for something around the house she just says can i just have some tea or uh, can someone take this for like she doesn't specifically say who so she knows when she says that she's not in a position of you know having someone uh, say no to her or whatnot like she's just she she's playing to the string of the one who is mostly taken advantage of and who is most who is most to feel guilty for not doing something and that would be me i would always feel guilty if my mother said can someone make me tea and no one got up and then i would end up being the one getting up and making her tea so my mother instead of saying say on a monday she says can someone make me tea let's say i get up and make her tea and then on a tuesday she wants tea instead of her saying hey to my sister let's say to my sister she says let's call her x x make me tea or saying to one of my other siblings why make me tea no she will still say can someone make me tea okay so let's say on tuesday i get up i make her tea on wednesday it will still be the same thing it is so unbelievable to me how how much of a backbone my mother doesn't have because it's almost like she's also scared of pointing out her other children and saying like hey you know what your sister has made tea for me in the past three days so you make tea for me or you make tea for me no instead she will just put out this generic ask like she's not gonna direct her asking to anyone you know she's not gonna say you but when it comes to me because i'm the one who often makes her the tea or does whatever for her then she gets to a point where she's comfortable to just say me she's can't she gets to a point because she will start off by saying oh like can someone make me tea and then as the week goes then she will say oh you make me tea talking to me so she's comfortable calling out my name and asking me to make her tea but she's not comfortable enough to ask her other children like listen i know this tea example has gone too far it's not even about making tea it is about the principle of having a backbone to not even to be fair just be fair and i think my mother has not been fair in the way she has treated us in the way she has assigned responsibilities for her it was a matter of who's willing to do it and so because i was the one who was always willing and didn't want her to be upset and didn't like i just i got up and did it and so i was the one taken advantage of now guess guess who's been taken advantage of lately my sister why because this year the good lord my mighty savior jesus christ got me to a breaking point listen there's a song by tasha corpse that says gracefully broken yes that is the one listen i got to my breaking point when it comes to the emotional abuse the narcissistic abuse the manipulation the belittling i got to my breaking point i got to my breaking point of being taken advantage of of always being because i think my family not just my mother my family all of them they actually they used the fact that i was the good one they used it against me you know like like being good without god's wisdom is the dumbest thing and i was good without god's wisdom being a nice person being a good person to people without god's wisdom it is the dumbest thing because you will be a doormat 
for whoever. People will drag you. People will take advantage of you. And so in my quote unquote goodness or like my being nice, my being res- being respectful, my being trying to be a good child, a good daughter, I ended up being taken advantage of because I didn't have the wisdom of God to be able to know, like to have limits. Okay. Yes, of course, we should be good people. As children of God, as a born-again Christian, I understand that I should be good. But I need the wisdom of God. Okay? I need limitation. I need boundaries. Listen, when Jesus said to that lady, why would I give my food to dogs? Do you know that verse? Where this lady comes and asks for food and Jesus is like, why would I take my children's food and give it to dogs? Listen, Jesus had a boundary. Jesus, the good almighty Jesus, he had a boundary. I was like, who are you? Like, I give my food to my children. But that story actually ends really well because the lady was like, you know what? Like, I just give me crumbs. Even dogs, they deserve crumbs. And Jesus' heart melted and was like, you know what? You'll be one of my kids. I'm paraphrasing the story, but... It's actually a pretty amazing story. But for me, it just shows that even Jesus himself, he had a boundary. He's like, who are you that I would give you my children's food? He had a boundary to his goodness. And I don't know if I'm phrasing it right because I don't necessarily want to say that being good or being kind has limitations. But just the word boundary is the only one I can come with. I can come up with that. It has to have boundaries. It has to have, it has to, your goodness, your kindness, your being nice. It has to have the wisdom of God and it has to have boundaries. So mine, mine didn't have boundaries. And guess who got some boundaries this year? Me. Me. Back to Tasha Korb's songs, a song where she says, gracefully broken. I was broken. I was emotionally broken. Like, I just couldn't take it anymore. Being taken advantage of, being the one who's used simply because I was trying to be a good child, be a good daughter, be a good sister, simply because I was also trying to avoid confrontation and addressing issues. So I always just did above and beyond more than was what was expected of me. I always took on other people's responsibilities. I was always the one to get up and do something because I was trying to be a good daughter. But I got to my breaking point, and this is where God gracefully broke me. I got to my breaking point where I just no longer could do it. It was one thing that my family was taking advantage of me. My own mother was taking advantage of me and not being fair in treating us as her children and not even paying mind to the fact that I was end- I was ending up carrying all the load because she didn't want to have to deal with like maybe my siblings attitude or them saying no or them like back chatting with her like she didn't want to deal with that so she just took advantage of the kid who was willing to do it and I got broken and I got tired and I couldn't take it anymore I couldn't take it anymore and and the Holy Spirit started revealing all these things to me through videos through podcasts through blogs about the unhealthiness that is resided in this family and so from the beginning of this year I I just like when I say breaking point I, I, I cannot find the right words to explain this because I got to a point where I just so couldn't take it like I went cold turkey. I went like full stop. Like full stop to me just being taken advantage of. Don't get me wrong. These people, because they haven't changed. But now they no longer have access to take advantage of me. Or it's no longer easy for them to take advantage of me. Because I got fed up. I got tired. And when I switched up. And stopped trying, and I stopped trying to be the good daughter, good child, good person, you know, at like the cost of me being taken advantage of. 
being brought down like and another thing is that they wouldn't even appreciate it it's like someone takes advantage of you doesn't even appreciate the fact that you go the extra mile to be there for them like my mother never even showed that she appreciated that not to say it wouldn't it wouldn't have been a heavy burden to carry the fact that i had to take responsibility for a lot of things and even other people's responsibilities my siblings responsibilities it would have been heavy still but good lord at least appreciate me at least show some gratitude anyway so i changed okay the past couple of months i think starting from april i just started changing i no longer could tolerate that behavior i no longer could put up with it i completely changed I completely changed and the change was so visible, so tangible that it, there was almost like some tension in the house when I st- started changing because I just no longer could could take being emotionally abused and being taken advantage of. Again, guess who is now being taken advantage of? My sister. Yep. So now that this is why I'm saying that my mother has no backbone. Now that she sees that she doesn't have full access to me. Access to take advantage of me. Access to use me as she she pleases. Now that it's no longer easy for her to do those things to me. She's doing it to my sister. So just today... Like we are getting ready for a trip, we are packing and my mother keeps asking my sister to do this. She asks her to do that, get this, get that. And she's avoiding speaking to me, um, telling me that, okay, you do that. The way this woman has no fairness in her, the way this woman has no backbone. Like instead of saying, okay, you do that and then you do that. No. She keeps on throwing these things to my sister. And then I see my sister getting annoyed. I see her getting wept, worked up. And then until she just like kind of like bursts out at my mother and says like, oh, but you've been saying that I should do this. I should do that. And I let them be. You know why I let them be? You know why I didn't jump in and say, oh, let me do this instead of like my sister doing everything. Because my sister never jumped in and helped me. And I don't know if that's revengeful, if that's spiteful, but at this point, I don't care. I don't care. I seriously don't care. For all my life, my sister has watched me being taken advantage of. And I bet, I bet in her eyes, she doesn't even see that I was the one being taken advantage of. In her mind, she doesn't even have the slightest clue that I was peeking after her taking her responsibilities that I was the one taken advantage of that that I was the one that my mother ended up you know calling to for help and all of that like in her mind because she's so naive she's so mm, what's the word ignorant yes she's so ignorant to other people's struggles or sufferings and so now that I see that my mother she no longer has that access to me And for me, it's not even me threatening my mother. I don't want my mother to be scared of me. Don't get me wrong. I don't want, because like I said, I see that my mother is scared of my sister. She's scared of her because my sister always has a comeback. She has a very snappy little mouth. She has an attitude for days. So I understand why my mother is scared of her. Because I I also used to be scared of my sister. And I didn't want to deal with any of that. But for me, I don't want my mother to be scared of me. But I don't want her to take advantage of me. Those two things could, ha- it, it is highly possible for someone to not take advantage of you, for you to stand up for yourself, but not for you to put it out there as a threatening way. Like, I'm not trying to scare my mother. I don't want my mother to be like, oh, I don't even want to talk to her because, you know, she's going to say something snappy or she's going to have a cheeky response. No. I'm not being cheeky to my mother. I'm not being disrespectful to my mother. But I am learning to stand up for myself when it comes to my mother. Because if I don't, if I keep tolerating her, if I keep tolerating her using me, if I don't set boundaries for my own mother, she will keep using me till my olden age. What olden can, nah? But she will keep using me, okay? She will keep using me forever and ever. So what is happening now is her showing herself how spineless she can be. 
because I am not threatening her. I am not in any way. And when I say threatening, I don't mean like verbally saying like, don't you dare even ask me anything, mom. I mean like the emotional threats, you know, like I'm going to like be snap you and I speak to you, like I'm going to give you an attitude or I'm going to give you the silent treatment. That's those are the kind of threats that I'm talking about, which is what my sister will normally do. You know, like there's this emotional and psychological, psychological threats that she puts out in the atmosphere so that you, you, you kind of feel scared to talk to her or, or address anything with her. So for me, I'm not putting that out there. But I'm setting firm boundaries with my mother so that she will stop using me. So now, because she is spineless, instead of coming to me and saying, oh, could you do this and that? And then going to my sister and saying, and then you do this and that. Because she, she, for some reason, she just cannot, she cannot fairly like distribute responsibilities. That's all I can say. Like somehow it seems like it's the hardest thing for my mother to fairly distribute like responsibilities and activities between us as her children. Like that's part of being a mother. You have to be able to like fairly and I'm not even saying equally because maybe that's taking up, taking it a, a level too high for her. But be fair, be fair. So as we are preparing for this trip, she keeps asking my sister to do this and that and this and that. And she's avoiding asking me anything. And no, I did not jump in at my sister's rescue and say, oh, let me do this. No, because my sister has never, ever once in her life saw that, oh, like I've been doing too much. So let me help my sister. She has never. She has never stopped in her tracks and, and said, oh, my sister is the one who always does this. So let me help her out. Or my mother is always asking my sister to do this. So let me help her out. No, she has never. I mean, she has enjoyed not doing half of the things or most of the things that she was supposed to do because I would do them for her. She has enjoyed me picking after her me taking her responsibilities, me trying to please my mother so much so that I ended up taking everybody's responsibilities. She has enjoyed that. So no, I am not jumping in to save her. Like my mother will have to grow a spine and talk to me if she wants me to do something. But I'm not going to jump in because that, that, that has always been the thing with me. And this also goes back to me trying to be a good daughter me trying to be a good person where I would always jump in like nobody would even ask for my help but I would insert myself and be like oh I can help but now I'm just like I'm stepping back if you want my help you will ask like even if my sister wanted my help because she saw that my mother was asking her to do everything but if my sister wanted my help ask me I'm not gonna jump in for you I'm not gonna think for you because that's what I did in this family. I thought for people. I always just made the assumption that, oh, they need my help. And I think it also ties in maybe to my own control issues. That I also had my own issues. That I felt like I always had to help other people. That I felt like I always had to be in control of certain situations. So maybe that also speaks volumes to my own control issues. But now I'm not jumping in. So I just looked at them like my sister getting annoyed at the fact that my uh, my mother was asking her to do everything instead of asking me. And I was like, I'm not going to say anything. If my mother wants me to do something, she can ask me herself. If my sister wants me to help her out, she can ask me herself. I'm not going to, I'm not going to think for you. You have your own mind. Use it. Grow a backbone because I'm not going to do it for you. And so this is how my mother actually brews and nurtures hatred and resentment and bitterness between us. Because when my sister is frustrated that she's the one doing everything, then she is re resentful towards me because she's thinking, well, why isn't she helping me out? Or why isn't my mother asking her? But that is the same way I felt. I also felt resentful towards my sister when I took on when I took all the responsibilities, I, I was resentful that my sister wasn't helping me, but I wasn't asking her to help me. 
I was resentful that my mother was asking me to do everything, but I wasn't also speaking up. But also at the same time, if I spoke up, I knew I would be made to seem like I'm the one starting up, you know, like an argument or something. Because whenever you address something in this family, it is looked at as if like you are starting drama or like you want an argument instead of like people listening to you and hearing you out. And so, yeah, my mother is actually the reason that my sister and I have unresolved feelings between each other. My mother is the reason that my sister and I have rotting feelings between one another. Have, we have resentment and bitterness towards one another because of my mother, because she doesn't have a backbone to be fair and be a just parent.